Um, today, my sermon topic, a um, lot of uh, topics I prepare, and what would be good, uh, interesting, uh, memorable topic for you. I used to be a youth pastor a while, uh, more than about 15 years uh, in the States, and um, I met many uh, you know, young men, young people uh, who have a quite different um, context, which means their you know, personal backgrounds, like Korean congregations and also uh, in English, you know, like multi uh, backgrounds, like ethnic groups, uh, Asian American, Korean American, uh, even Chinese American, uh, even uh, white you know, people, American people. Um, I used to, um, to you know, share the gospel and head up a youth ministry together. And what I learned from them, the ministry, that each one of us has different uh, unique uh, background. And to understand, uh, knowing or know about uh, God and based on their concept and cultures and language and race too. So the best sermon is to approach who they are, and they're based on the, what they you know, understood about you know, Jesus Christ in terms of their context. So today, I prepare a little bit, a lot of uh, pictures, and a little bit easy topic and sermon stories, especially my story too, and many people could uh, understand and agree uh, about uh, the topic you know, we're going to think about, we're going to ask each other uh, through this time, Ho hopefully. Uh, you could uh, get engaged with this message. Well, uh, some of you, maybe new students, um, may not know who I am. Maybe uh, many, many of you guys know uh, who I am. Many teachers and students, uh, even including myself, we consider uh, this school size a little bit smaller. It is small, but uh, in terms of uh, financial budget-wise, it's not that small. Actually, um, compared to maybe church size, our annual budget is almost 2,000 church member size, actually. So um, it's kind of small number, but you know, a lot of uh, you know, activities and programs, uh, school, you know, education programs we do provide in terms of uh, you know, big group, um, especially non-profit organization, the church size, any non-profit organization. So you don't need to say that our school size is pretty small. It, it is not, actually. It's a big size. Many schools cannot afford this type of program, actually. You know, outdoor activities, many, you know, you know, overseas programs, not really. So, you know, make yourself as proud and also consider this, you know, type of school as very unique and helpful for your, you know, academic growth and spiritual growth as well. So, if you do not know who I am, let me start with this story. My marriage one. So, um, my wife, um, look at this. Um, this is the uh, photo we um, the dating each other, and my wife friend took the photo, and she was quite young, right? I met her when she was 24, and I was seven years older, which means 31. 도둑놈이지, a thief, right? So I used to say that how to touch her hand, to hold her hand, to grab her hand. Let me teach you. So what I taught you, this is kind of sort of the uh, Bible, okay? Uh, remember how to date. Especially boys, remember, okay? Not say, you're so beautiful, let me grab your hand, like that way. No way, okay? Gently, softly. You could say that, honey. In the car, actually. Or maybe in the bus. So you could say, you know, moving the, you know, the car, right? And then you have to say, you know what, it's really dangerous, so let me hold your hand. And then hold the hanger, right? And then you can say, I hold your hand, I like this one. You? What do you mean? And then the drive, the, the drive. oh, the Luna is so happy. Wreck! <laughs> <laughs> Overflow, like, it was over, oh, it was vomiting. Anyway, it's like, I used to drive stick shift, right? Stick shift. You got LG, ring, bing, 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 right? 일단, 2단, 3단, 3단, right? So when I was a uh, college student, it's mandatory actually, it's not automatic uh, you know, driving skill. It's a manual driving test actually. So first, second, third, fourth, and fifth is kind of gear. The change is, you know, switched. And what I um, kind of thinking about my 
you know, my wife, actually the, the, the girlfriend, uh, how can I hold her hand? That's what I keep, you know, thinking. How can I touch her hand? So um, my hand is kind of cold during winter time. So I said, Hyung Shi, oh, my hand is really cold. Uh, I, I know that you, you're young, you're younger than me. So I think you, you must be, you know, hot hand, right? So can you hold my hands? She said, okay. And then she touched my hand. Oh, hot pack got toyos. So I feel like, and, and then the driving you know, times, like I said, do you know, have you ever, uh, the, have, well, do you have a license, driving license? And she said, yes. Have you ever done, I mean, drive, stick drive, stick driving, a stick, the stick shaped car? She said, no, let me teach you. So, like, for example, this is stick shift, right? Like, for example, so, so you gotta hold this one and then boom, 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 right? And then what I said, hold this one. And then she touched this one, hold it, this one. Uh, right? And then she hold this one, let me train you, teach you, and then grab her on, and hand, and shoo, shoo, shoo. And then, oh, she's really interesting, she's really interested, and I said, I'm holding your hands. And then I touching your hands, and she's kind of embarrassed. Uh, so that moment, and uh, I never been to the uh, skiing uh, resort uh, with my wa the, my wife w when we are dating, but um, kind of secret. Uh, but we're gonna edit this one. But my ex girlfriends actually. Uh, so when I went to the ski resort, and uh, so, do you know how to snowboard? No. Let me teach you. And they hold the hands, and you know coming down. Like this, like, and then I said, I touch your hands, <laughs> like that way. And the, um, you know, another good story is the uh, my. I used to have a sunroof, in the car actually, mean, mean a set on the one, and you know we went to the ocean area, and then nighttime. Do you want to see the stars? Yeah, and then, you know, open the sunroof, big, and look at the sky. Wow, your father must be thieved. Why? He stole the stars to put in your eyes. That's why your eyes so sparkle. Blink, blink, twinkle, tinkle. Right? So uh, she was really touched. And then, uh, you know, I said, um, you know, I, I pro provided last time how to uh, propose. Right? So we got married. Actually, on the right side, this is the actual honeymoon the big photo. One of the days um, we went to a restaurant. And I was pretty young, right? So, um, chi? <laughs> so, yeah, we, we had a good time. And um, after two years, uh, we, my wife, she got uh, pregnant. And uh, we uh, had a baby. So, this is Lois. And uh, a few years later, Joseph was born. This is the Joseph, by the way. The day he was born, and I was happy. And you may not know, uh, Lois was, uh, she was a little immature child, which means, uh, 좀 일찍 태어났어요. Like, you know, she was a little bit, uh, 팔삭동이. So, 칠삭, not 칠삭동이, which was seven months, not almost eight months, which was supposed to be in the womb about nine months. But uh, in Korea, it's uh, 10 months, right? But in the uh, U.S. context, but she was born actually as a uh, eight months. So she had to go to an incub incubator. So, which means the um, she was quite physically very weak, so we deliver uh, breath milk and you know, every day uh, my wife she would kind of worry about uh, Lois' health, and uh, fortunately Joseph was uh, uh, was uh, you know the born as a healthy uh, boy, so it was a blessing. And then the, another picture uh, of Lois. Um, this uh, I believe uh, about. Uh, about one or two months of the picture and she was about you know age five and laughing at each other and my wife she really likes um, uh, yeah, I'm kind of lucky guy so yeah and uh, this one one dog Joseph uh, where, where's Joseph, Joseph right now uh, so changed by the way so changed and uh, it's a good way changed um, and my my parents actually uh, they love uh, the first child, the grandchild, and very very. Now so my father is almost eighty years old. My mom, you know, seventy seven, uh, three years apart, and they're really happy. Um, when Lois was born, my mom 
I came over from Korea and take over um, the Lois and as they're they're really really uh, you know um, they're very beautiful they were respectful the grandparents and this a photo uh, she went to um, the preschool and she crying every night every day it's because uh, uh, she wants to she doesn't want to say a goodbye to her mother so but I gave her um, encouragement. I found uh, one interesting uh, photo. Uh, it is uh, Mr. Park and Christine. It's about 10 years ago. Yeah, so uh, young man actually, uh, Mr. Park was a young man. This is actually US of the Yongsan, the, you know, the military base actually. We went here and we have a sort of the, uh, the fair. And many uh, the, here, the, this is the uh, Emily actually, Emily's son. And we had uh, the sort of the uh, watched the fireworks actually is uh, Independence Day, so it's such a good time. I remember uh, Lois, she was in, uh, she fell in love with this guy, and she got the crush. So the his name is um, uh, what is his name? I forgot actually. Huh? Ji Myung, Ji Myung, yeah, Ji Myung, Ji Myung, and she really, really liked this guy. And look at this the next picture. Uh, and, Look at his face, so happy. So uh, Jimmy Young is now is about to be a, a college kid. Um, it's one year, I think, the older than uh, Lois. And Joseph, uh, he likes uh, the, the cook all the time. Cook, uh, cook, cook, cook. And I remember uh, one of uh, the marathons a long time ago. Uh, Claire, she wants to take a photo with uh, Joseph. This is the photo. I saw younger, right? She was quite young, right? <laughs> and then Joseph too. So uh, it was a really memorable uh, marathon experience. And one of uh, um, my favorite sports is the snowboard, the you know snowboard, and then skiing uh, too. So this is the photo. This is actually Christine, uh, and this is the Haiwan Resort. It's beautiful picture. At lowest too. And Joseph used to learn about. Uh, snowboarding not anymore probably he's gonna go back here uh, this, to snowboarding again anyways we love winter winter sports so now uh, Lois uh, as you know becoming the senior year uh, Lo one though Joseph is by age 12 this is my last year actually the photo age is 16 actually and uh, age 11 uh, <laughs> laughing and uh, some of you guys may know that uh, fortunately, uh, with God's blessing, we are able to move in the new uh, you know, place. Uh, it's such a great uh, in the place. God has given us uh, this new shelter um, to support our parents, I mean, our the family too. And one last photo, it's kind of a uh, funny uh, photo, it's a uh, face swap. Do you know the app, right? Face swap. This is the uh, what we try. And this is the Lois, but uh, uh, my wife. And this is the my wife, but uh, Lois face. So, and this is the uh, me. And, <laughs> and this is a Joseph. And so, uh, supposed to be Joseph and then me. And it's uh, kind of interesting. Uh, very funny. Uh, it's kind of good, great technology. Uh, so, Maybe when Joseph's older, uh, maybe getting my age, maybe he's gonna be like this way. Uh, it's good or bad? I don't know. It's like uh, bad. <laughs> bad. She said that. Okay. All right. So today, um, I was uh, thinking about a special topic. What would be good, uh, relevant topic? Many students could um, maybe understand, um, remember. You know, after this service, well. Unfortunately, I have to say that the senior students, they've been working on their college applications. The one of all, college application, it is common and questions. I select question number five. So this is such a um, maybe big famous uh, question among many, many senior students. The younger students, you could also maybe know, maybe in advance and also prepare a little bit you know, earlier, uh, maybe what you prepare. So let me read the question and then point out some keyword. Question number five. Discuss an accomplishment, event, or realization that sparked a period of personal growth, a new understanding of yourself or others. I made an underline in different colors, yellow and 
a little bit sky blue, then green and orange. Yellow sparked a period. I believe this is the key word. And related, which is outcome, sequence, consequence, personal growth. So you are going to have a special moment for your personal growth and new understanding of yourself, which is to find out who I am. And I never knew this is the who I am. The second thing is, I never knew the people who, been, I'm, who I've been knowing. Maybe my parents, my friends, the community I belong, or my relatives, maybe not my neighbors. Spark a period, it challenged me to think about one, two, three, personal growth, and then who I am, and then others. Well, I watched, uh, I was able to watch, it is called America's Got Talent. You guys know that this, probably you may watch this one, we're going to watch this one, short video clip. Samuel uh, Samuka, he came from Brazil. He lost his one of legs, actually, because of cancer, actually. He's a young man, and uh, it's like from the poor family. What he uh, confessed, the, uh, you know, interview time, the Simon, one of the judges, the, he asked this question, what, what's your, you know, ultimate goal? And then after this, um, you know, AGT, um, you know, the competition, what he said, if I have a chance, if I win the, you know, the championship, then I'd like to buy a house and support my, you know, family. Well, my, many uh, people could say that, but unfortunately, many people cannot afford purchasing a house or support their family members. This, he's the one of them, of, and then he lost his, his leg, one of the legs. So, um, one day, he met a, he met a the person, uh, maybe inspire him, uh, find out his spiritual, I mean, his spiritual, uh, special talents, it is called dancing. Like, you know, b-boys. He didn't know, he has, a, you know, talents, so, he practice what it is called prosthetic. <laughs> Thank you, prosthetic. So let's watch this one. So um, <laughs> you guys know this one, right? Newer bra brawler, brawler uh, is like spike. Well, spark a person, a period of a personal growth. I read this one. It's really interesting. This one. Let me read this one. Spike throws cactus, <laughs> grandes, that send needles flying. And a show-stopping super, a feel of a cactus spines that slows down and damage enemies. That means a spike, which is the uh, weapon, actually. Well, I'm not talking about weapon, but like it's a moment, change your life, change your story, and change your perspective. Well, this is the moment, the personal growth, in many ways, you could think about Maybe certain, um, you know, through the certain moment, the vision you could have, or planning to go different way, and learning and training, creativity and develop and motivation goals. Well, uh, many of uh, the people um, have they want to have a personal growth, and also they want to be a better person uh, through the certain uh, the moment. Well, the, uh, one of the Bible story, famous stories, I keep using these illustrations um, to explain personal growth, how we could be changed, how it could be better. The story is of, it is called the book of Acts, the, um, the Apostle Paul's story. Let me give you a quick summary and then move on to another story too. Acts chapter 8, um, if you read the Bible, it, this chapter describes about, it is called persecution of a church. Many young, uh, even the church members, when they confess Jesus Christ as the my Messiah, then immediately they got uh, actually persecuted, which means many uh, Jewish people and the Roman Empire, the soldiers and people, they do not consider Jesus as the uh, you know, the Savior or Messiah for everyone. So they started um, kill or persecute or like give them hard time um, you know, not to believe in Jesus as the Messiah. Well, actually chapter 7, one of the famous 
disciples, I'm not, it is called deacons or believers. His name is Stephen. Stephen, he was selected as the one of the leaders and he was sent by the apostles, which means church leaders, to the uh, many Jewish people and it was a church temple of a Jewish. So what the Bible mentioned that qualification of a church leadership, Acts chapter 6 and 5, what two qualification major, first one, a man full of faith. If you have a strong faith in God, you'll be qualified to share the gospel and then support many people as the you know Christian, even the church leader. Not all the just pastors, you are the the people, I mean you are the person who can share the gospel. And also another qualification is a man of the Holy Spirit. If you depend on the Holy Spirit, pray more, and God will give you the you know, power, authority, and through the Holy Spirit, and you can be the messenger of you know, Jesus Christ. Stephen is one of the persons who qualify and share the gospel as the uh, church leader. So, chapter 7, what they described about Stephen, he uh, that bravely shared the gospel to the, all the Jewish people and from the, uh, the Old Testament story, the Moses and all the prophets story and then all they you know, criticized about they, how they killed Jesus Christ. So uh, Jewish people, they really, really upset and mad at the Stephen. What the Bible described that here, look at this one. At, at this, they covered their ears. Imagine this picture. They cover the ears and yelling at the top of their voices like ah, like this way. When they heard about the message from Stephen. Why? They went crazy. They, they thought that uh, Stephen is to talk about trash, even curse about our belief, belief actually. Then screaming and they what? Rush at Stephen and drag him out and begin to what? What is it? Stone him. Dolo, chaso, chugin mea. Stone him. Stone, which means like it's like a lot of pain and uh, it's kind of fear. A lot of you know the a lot of mixing feeling. Probably uh, Stephen has. And what the Bible mentioned, the green part, the yellow part. Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a, a young man named, what is it? Saul. Saul is Apostle Paul. Eventually he's going to have a new name, Paul. Why many Jewish people try to kill or drag, take him to the uh, right in front of Paul, Saul? Because Saul was the very famous, reputable man among Jewish people, as a rabbi, as a pharaoh, as a well-educated, high-ranking person, a young man. And he, they want to have a special permission from Saul to kill, stone him. Uh, obviously, Saul, he allowed to kill Stephen. Stephen must deserve to what? Die. He Blasphemy, which means what? He cursed their faith. So, people of the uh, Jewish people was kill him and stone him. And next chapter, after the death of the uh, Stephen, is more severe persecutions the Bible talks about. Chapter 8, verse 1 to 3. Here, look at this one. But Saul began to destroy the church. Going from house to house, door to door, he dragged off both men and women and put them in where? Prison. He was so desperate to grab, kill, find those who anyone call himself them, themselves as what? Christians. Okay, I will take him to the what? Is the jail. And you deserve to die. Stone them. And here, chapter 9. Suddenly, Bible dramatically it changed the story. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. It's very kind of 
adjective words like more describe how he was mad, he was angry about Christians, about Jesus. Not Christ, Jesus. Name called Jesus. Fallen teacher, fallen prophet. He thought Jesus is bad person he, who deserved to die. And what is it? Damascus, which means what? Quite far from the uh, uh, Jerusalem, he want to go there. Like, for example, from Seoul to Busan. Busan, he heard that there are so many Christians over there. Let me go there. Let me kill many Christians. And how they deserve to this one. So he decided to go to what? Damascus. He might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. So let me grab them, put them in the, what, the jail in Jerusalem. What a great faith in Jewish, like their religion, which means that their own God. He had a strong faith. He had strong belief as a what? Jewish person and even the uh, uh, rabbi or a uh, pharaoh. This is an incredible story. You guys know the story, right? This is the background. And let's read this together. Chapter 9, verse 3 to 4, in one voice together. 1, 2, 3. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? What the Bible described that is on the way to go to Damascus where many Christians hide or stay. And then Saul, he want to kill, persecute, or grab them to the, um, put it in the jail. But on the way, he saw special light from the sky and flashed around him. And here are the boys, very interesting boys. He called, someone called his name. It is called Saul. And Saul. If your teacher, your mom, called your name more than one time, it's not a test of normal. I said, Brooke. Brooke? Brooke! It's more, it's like a voice tone is more higher, right? I'm pretty sure Jesus' voice is not nice. So, so, so. <laughs> it's not just gentle, probably a little bit high tone. So, so, and so. Like this way, and then he said, why? Do you persecute me? Maybe anger, maybe upset, maybe sadness, kind of mixed feeling voice tone, someone called Saul, his name. And the next Bible verse said, and then what? He just saw the light and he said, Who are you? Who are you? I am Jesus. Whom you are persecuting. Now get up, go into the city. You will be told what you must do. Let's imagine this picture, guys. Jesus, Saul, he all the time remember the bad person, notorious fallen teacher, fallen prophet, who deserved to die on the cross, brutally actually, no mercy. Even his followers, I'm going to grab them to the other uh, one, put it in the jail all the time. His mind and brain, his, all his life, name of Jesus, what must be punished. But somehow, invisible voice, he heard that suddenly indicate, describe the name, the person it is called Jesus. Jesus. And he fell down from the, the horse. Uh, what is it? The Bible said here, when he opened his eyes, oh, here, they heard, which means the people around Saul, they heard the voice, but didn't see anyone. Probably consider Saul, probably he is insane, which means crazy. What? What is doing? We heard the voice, but nothing here. But only Saul heard the voice and saw something. And he, he became blind. That's the next consequence. Guess what? 
after becoming a blind, what he did, this to keep in mind this one, this is really an really important point. For three days, he was blind. How many days? Three days. And did not eat or drink anyone, anything. Which means what? It is not fasting. Completely, he stopped eating and drinking. How many days? Three days. In blindness, which means what? Darkness, in certain isolated place, he stayed and stopped eating, drinking. Let me ask this question. In three days, what, what do you think that what he did in the darkness with fasting? What do you think? I'm pretty sure a lot of things he started to think about his life. What he did for Jesus' people. What he remembered. What he, who Jesus Christ. Then what he did kill, persecute many Jesus followers. Many like unhappy moments. Imagine his like pictures he had. Three days. In this moment. In this moment. God he sent special person, it is called Ananias, which is like another prophet, and sent him to the Saul's life. And this is what Saul, Ananias mentioned it. Brother Saul, the Lord, Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. I'd like to focus on, emphasize on this part later in this sermon. Jesus has sent Ananias as a helper, as a mentor, as a what? Supporter, the, son, the person of encouragement to whom? Paul's life, Saul's life, so that he could see again, which means see the world differently and be filled with the Holy Spirit which is what new spiritual life and then immediately what the Bible mentioned that something this is another point key point like scales or like I the like contact lens scales fell from his eyes and could see what is it again let me uh, go back here what kind of scale? What do you think? It's like dirty stuff? Or just a, you know, contact lens, what I mentioned? Not really. It is called spiritual perspectives. Which is what? All, all the mindset, all the, his philosophies, all the life values fell down as trash. And then he started to have a new perspective and to see the world differently. Then he got up, got baptized, and he started to read the Bible and went to Saudi Arabia. Arabia, three years, to get ready for the mission trip. It is called, I believe, it is called Paul. He became, a, from Saul to Paul, he had a what? New hope of life, hope of God. The spark moment for his life, it's like completely transition, transformation from what? It's like the person persecutor to minister, which is like, you know, the pastor today. And then he made a great contributions after this moment, sparked the moment. What is it? He made three missionary journeys to spread the Christian message to non-Jewish communities in Asia Minor, which is today's the Turkey area. The Greek area, the Greek province of Arcadia, Arcadia, the Macedonia and Cyprus, as well as Judea and Syria, as a narrator in the Acts. 14 of the 27 New Testament books, more than 50%, he wrote down and publicate to the world and train and establish many churches. God. He used Saul from, it is like the bad person to what? The great person for the kingdom of God. 
and with new skill, which is new perspective. It is called spark of personal, <laughs> of, of personal growth, period of personal growth. Okay, let me stop talking about the Bible anymore. Okay, we're going to go back later. Let me uh, ask you this question. If you look at this one, Slick time infographic. So if you are in one of an age, right? So most of you guys probably you are belong to this area. Maybe age 13, 12 to maybe 18. Teachers probably 25, 45. I am sure actually. Unfortunately, <laughs> uh, it's kind of sad. Anyway, so I don't consider I'm kind of old, but I, somehow my body is not you know recognized. Anyway, so your age. But this much, but here, you cannot see here, but 9 to 11 hours. Can you believe? Your body needs more sleep. If you stay up until 2 a.m. playing games, watching videos, my son all the time, let me finish up, finish up, finish up, more than 30 minutes, 30 minutes, and then go to bed midnight, which is not good. You need more sleep, more sleep. So age of 13, 12, at least 9 to 11 hours. Your body, physically, which is biographic, and the, you know, more growing up right now, more mostly, and age high schoolers about eight to ten hours. Unfortunately, lack of sleep, you do have, with a certain reasons, right? So, like, think about what age do you think you consider as a prime time, beautiful time, the happiest time? in your life, in terms of, let's say, until age 90, something like that. What do you think? 25 to 45? Okay, what else? 0 to 3, okay, 0 to 3, okay. Sleep, pooping, and eating, all right? Good, very good. What else? 45 to 65, why? Uh, I don't think so. Daniel, now I'm so brown nosing. Do you know what brown nosing means? I love you! It's like, which is not true. Anyway, thank you by the way. So, so this one, I, to me, if I ask, you, ask, ask this question to me, like, um, myself, then I would say age, here, 27 and 31. That's the prime time in my life, actually. This is the photo. And uh, I was uh, age of 30, uh, I mean, the 20, 29th of like, I went to Japan, uh, they, to Tomocho, it's a passionate uh, pastor, I preach, it's like a Japanese church, actually, I preach in English, by the way, not Japanese word. And then uh, I went to um, New Europe, actually, uh, by myself, uh, I went to uh, UK, and from, from the LA, actually, you know, flew to the uh, UK, the London, and uh, I went to, uh, I took the, uh, the bullet train, from London to uh, Paris, and Paris to uh, Switzerland, and Switzerland to Rome. Uh, this is really trip, the personal the uh, trip by myself. And this is Colosseum so here too. It's beautiful, amazing history. I I, I spoke to the uh, Mr. John. He you, you may not know that he came from actually grew up in the Europe actually Eastern Europe area. Then he knows a lot of you know, the Europe countries. Uh, I, I I like to go back again and you know, a lot of histories. So, this young age time, age 29 or 30, ah, never get tired. So, you know, traveling and even like, no sleep, you know, go, and even I went to Brazil mission trip here, age 30, and uh, this is uh, age 32, I think. It was a church ministry um, here. Well, I was quite, MBTI, not, I don't trust, but uh, what do you think my MBTI? Introvert, e extrovert. Extrovert, yes, I am extrovert person. Very outgoing person. But when I was a kid, here, this is my photo here. 1981, can you believe? 1981, yeah. So my wife, she was born 1980. So um, <laughs> this is 81. I was an um, uh, elementary school kid, and uh, Taekwondo I learned. Yi Pum, the Yi Pum Eo, okay. Kabujima, okay. So, um, and I learned Taekwondo, uh, I was quite act, you know, active person, you know, extrovert, extrovert person. I love hanging out and playing, a lot of things. 
And my, my mom and dad, he, they one day decided to uh, support my education, actually. So I grew up, as I mentioned, the Songnam city, which is the quite, you know, at that time, quite, you know, country town, country city area, country, you know, the country boy. Uh, they want me to um, study, actually, the Seoul, which is the Gangnam area. So they actually prepare a lot of things, you know, in terms of finance, my education, unfortunately. They uh, had a, uh, it is called cosine. Do you know cosine means in Korean? It's a 보증. 보증이라고 있어요. 이게 뭐냐? 네, 한국말로 한번 읽어줄게요. 이거 잘 들어보세요. 빚을 갚아야 할 사람이 그 의무를 행하지 않을 경우에 다른 사람에게 그 사람을 대신하여 빚을 갚을 것을 부담하는 일. It's kind of Korean. It's even difficult, right? So, which means like if you uh, support, sign to your maybe friends, your family members, they want to buy a house or let's get some loan from the bank, then you could say, okay, if my friend or cousin cannot, they're not able to pay back, then I'll pay back on behalf of my family members or friends. That is the cosign. 대신 갚아야 된다는 거야. My father, he did three times. We found out when I was sixth grader. I remember my mom, we are living in a house actually in Songnam area. And then one day actually suddenly my mom said, help me out. Why? What? Well, what is it? And then she was uh, digging the, uh, the underground. 땅을 막 파는 거야. And break the wall area. And put all the little bit kind of the expensive belongings, which is the, uh, some bungee, the rings and golds. And, you know, at that time, all the cash driven and some, you know, marriages, the rings and some watch, right? And put all the, then what? Some, uh, put in the secret, uh, the storage. They try to make the temporary you know, storage. The break the wall or ground and put it. Why? Next day, tomorrow, all debtors, which means the uh, bank, the people, they come and then grab all things what we have, even rice. I remember rice too. Next day, I remember, it's kind of Korean style, they put uh, this, uh, the red part, they put all the things, which means belongs to bank, belongs to someone, belongs to something, which means what? We don't have anything. We lost house. We lost everything next day. Please remember this one. Cosign. What the Bible mentioned, even Bible doesn't record the it was a rec or the encourage us to sign up to support others with the, some debts. What the Bible don't agree to guarantee another person's debt or put up security for someone else. My father had a good relationship, friendship with his friends. Somehow, without any discussion with my mom, he made a decision. He did a cosign. But a friend, he suddenly, he ran away. And then my father took over all that. About 30 years ago, it was an eog. 30 years ago. Even today, eog is not, I mean, a lot actually. But 30 years ago, eog, maybe today, maybe 20 or 30 something like that. But 300,000 or 300,000 dollars. That's that's much. We are really struggling. But my parents, they want to support my sister and I, you know, about education. So they actually, um, they got a lot of loans and then support us. So we, uh, they sent us to the Seoul, Gangnam area. I went to the school, actually, Jungdong, uh, Jungakyo and Kodakyo, which is the uh, Gangnam area. Maybe it's a good school, but a lot of, um, it's like pressure we, we had. Well, compared to today, pressure, academic pressure, what you have, I'm sorry I have to say, I'm kind of old, but nothing. When I was a kid, you know, the high school, even middle school, um, I hate this number actually, 45 and 23. We, because I, I mentioned this one, you know, this number, it was a placement test. When we, um, you know, had a, when we, uh, you know, entered, was called an entrance the, uh, the first grade, which means the freshman year, then we had to take the placement test. An academic test, actually. We take a test, and then they um, give us a ranking based on our scores. From here to here, number one, number two, number three, which means what? Last person, maybe Dr. Son, she's the last person, which is what? Like, it's like, you know, the last one. 
So this is the, actually the order that created the system and then how they train us and they educate us. Which means that everyone recognizes who's top number one you know, among us. Michael is the number one the student. Who's the last one? Dr. Sun. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry I have to say that. So that is what, how they put the, uh, the leads, ranking list on the wall here or the back. And the people, they recognize my ranking. I was place 45. First exam. And a few days later, home teacher called me in front of all students. What she said. I remember her name even. I don't want to mention, but I don't respect, but what she said. Yi Min Ho, those Hashi you're 45. You're placed with the 45. You're not qualified to even get accepted high school. As a freshman year middle school, which is I just got graduate, you know, from elementary, and you know, got accepted. I mean, go to the uh, the middle school first day. A few days later, well, she judged me, evaluated me by my performance. Forty five. I'm not qualified to go to high school. Well, I would like to study a lot. I want to have a better grade, but my mom and dad, we had to live separately. My mom and dad living in Songnam, but we're living in the um, you know, Seoul, Gangnam. But we had to live at least three years being apart until Chuanke Young. So now today is probably seventh grader. You know, once a week I go to my mom and dad's you know, house, and then the, we 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 you know um, had together. I mean the got together and then you know she provided us some you know rice and something like that but I want I don't want to mention about this number because I feel kind of sorry that what I did I decided cheating I want to have better number but my academic ability was not the better you know not able to move on the better grade people consider me as a you know not as you know the smart kid but all the time consider me as a loser or some trouble, troublemaker. 45, maybe even lower than 45 sometimes. But I made a decision. Let me cheat and get better. I keep telling you this one. If you make the, a decision about cheating, then a couple of reasons. First one, probably you have a lot of academic pressure. Last minute you want to do you want to make it the better, the easy, you know, the consequence. Or the second one is probably you don't want to, um, let's say, you have a kind of lack of management skill. You know, last minute you want to work on your homework or assignment or even prepare like your final of the midterm exam, but you know you feel like you know not ready. You make the decision. What is it? Last minute decision is cheating, plagiarism. Keep in mind this one. So, um, 45, this is really horrible number. I made a cheating next day. My home teacher, she found out. And she called my name again in front of all students. Emira, come out here. She didn't give me a gift. She gave me physical discipline, which means what? It's like beating. Swipe, you know, the 23 times. You cannot imagine, right? It's like it was Korea time. It's like, that's my time, actually. Twenty-three time, she swap. It was um, what is it called? Uh? Slap. Slap. Slap on my face. Twenty-three <laughs> times. I was my number was twenty-three. That's why I hate that. Huh? So still, twenty-three times, slap, and then also bit my the, my butt actually the, with the bruise actually the, in my shoes are stick. 23 times. I had a, a, a huge bruise and um, you know, went back home. My parents actually came over from Songnam to uh, my house. Uh, they crying actually um, for my the wound, you know, the, 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 what's going on, the, the wound area. Like, so I was crying and I, I want to be better. However, 
Unfortunately, my academic ability was not incredible. You know, the immediately you know improve. My my dad, my mom, all the time encouraged me. Okay, it's okay, it's okay. But I was not okay. So what my personality used to be, it is called extrovert. But after this incident, I became extremely became it is called introvert. Stop talking. Stop hanging out. Stop exposing my heart, even myself, to others. I feel kind of shy. I feel lack of confidence all the time when I go to school. They consider me as a, just a loser or the person who what, you know, did cheating easily. So I was not able to um, you know, study more. But in a few, um, I mean, the next year, which is the, uh, the sophomore year of time, we had a new teacher that he, I remember his name, he, t he taught the science, actually, subject. And then when he had a personal counseling with me, I was really surprising the comment. Mino, you are able to get better. Your history I heard, but it's okay. You get better academically, spiritually, so I want to support you, I trust you. That comment remained in my life and changed my perspective. I started to study a lot. And I start to, from my ranking 45 to, I made it my, the sophomore year with ranking 12. And even all teachers, even my friends around me, they were really surprised. My senior year of the middle school, I finished my senior year ranking 6. And I, when I look back my history, I was not, I was not a smart kid, but teacher who inspired my life with this one. Unwavering dedication, patience, better understanding, encouragement, it changed my life. If I tell you about the definition of a 선생님, the teacher, this is the what Chinese one then. 선, preceding, before, 먼저, 태어난 거. 생 was a life. They were probably born earlier than you, which means what experienced. And then what? What is it? Respectful elder. Well, there are so many teachers and so many people probably you had in your life, even including today. And then I'd like to ask this question to myself. Do you remember or there are some teachers, mentors who change your perspectives, who change your life, who change your and academic abilities in your life? If I ask this question, then how many people do you have? To me? Until high schoolers? None. That's why I, I kept saying that I hate going to school. I hate my school, even though what people said, Gangnam, whatever. I hate, seriously. I hate my friends. I hate going to school. If I go to college, no dream. And then, the, of course, I failed my college exam because of horrible, you know, like, you know, life, high schooler experiences. And uh, no motivation, no college, you know, any, like, you know, dream. And somehow, my pastor actually reminded me what he said that, uh, you know, you, you used to say that you want to go to a seminary, which is the Bible college. So why don't you consider about that? So I started to think about that. And I start to go to Sebekido, the prayer, all all the prayer meeting every Friday night. You know, go to church, and also the Sunday service time. You know, great, you know, spiritual commitment. What I have done, but one day, I have to go to the military. Um, today, the survivor game, the paintball. Do you know? Um, I actually joined one time last the one. Within one minute, I got killed actually. <laughs> So uh, I got shot here and neck. Oh, it was really painful, by the way. It's like, it's like I just started, but I got killed. Like, it was so shameful. I didn't mention that. But no zero the military training because I was uh, exempted uh, by the uh, the military obligation. Oh, no. Uh, there's some stories. So let me tell you. And before, you know, the, all the young men, the Korean men, you know, we have to go to the military obligation. We do have the duty, right? 
So like between age 20 or 21 and 22, that is the probably, um, you know, the popular age would go to military obligation. Now, right after finish up to my freshman year of college in Korea, actually, my dad, he came from actually the, uh, it is called, um, uh, what is called, uh, um, what's it, what is called Hebyongde? Navy? Navy? Marine, yeah, Marine, yeah, yeah. The Marine, yeah. So uh, he went to uh, he, the, the, the Hebyong Day, which is a Marine, and he, what he keep telling me that uh, if you want to be a real man, you need to go to military. That's what all the time mentioned that. But I really, really disagree. You know, it's like, it's just, I don't think so. Like, you know, so I try to avoid or escape from this obligation all the time. So I try to apply it to maybe a different type of uh, the army. Air Force, even the uh, some um, ROTC or some uh, it is called a uh, U.S. base, the trip the base. It is called what is it called? The, I forgot actually. Katusa, yeah, Katusa, Katusa. So, but I failed actually Katusa exam and I was accepted at uh, Air Force. Um, you know the what's called uh, the military. So, um, I pray a lot actually. What I heard that. If, you know, many of my friends, uh, I mean, not, not, I'm sorry, please do not consider this one as true, but some people said, you know, go to uh, the military, they learn kind of, kind of unnecessary things like smoking and drinking, even the womanized, like something like that. So uh, that's kind of bad habit, what they heard, but that's not true. Maybe some depends on people, but that's what I, uh, you know, realized. I don't want to be like that way. So I all the time pray that, Lord, that if I go to the military, then please provide the opportunity or the environment <laughs> where I could more focus on you. That's what I, you know, kept praying, praying, praying. And one day, uh, I, I started to pray, all the prayer meeting, and um, I had a pain, huge pain on my, on the right side, like this, you know, the large intestine area. And then, like, my dad actually the pharmacist, and, you know, the Yaksa Seo Rabbi my, my, my father all the time said, you know, I hate, you know, my kids sick, you know, illness, all the time said. So, um, so my large intestine, suddenly, there is some huge pain, and then the pain is getting more severe, which means like getting worse, and worse, and worse. I remember, it was the two weeks before Chuseok holiday season, and I had a huge fever, about, you know, 40, you know, uh, degree, and then I, I told my dad, and he said, you know, be a man, like all the time said. So what is be a man? It's like, I don't know, it's like, you know, staying home and lay down. And then my dad suddenly came and then checked my, you know, the fever. And then, oh, let's go to the, the, the emergency room. So we went there. It was like right the week before the Chuseo holiday. And the doctor, you know, diagnosed my body that, oh, I think you need to take the, um, the operation. Operation? Susul. Why? Why? And then uh, after the, taking a CT, uh, CT, uh, CT? CT, yeah. Uh, MRI, I'm sorry, MRI. MRI is like, MRI is kind of scary. Like, you know, you got the shot and then you can scan your body and then what they said, if you get a shot that you may get, you may die. So like that, kind of threatening. Anyway, I took the uh, MRI and uh, what they found out, my large intestine, intestine, huge, it's like kind of tumor it had. It's like this much. And almost exposed, which means like, if I expose that, I mean, they expose the, 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 the symptom, the, the, the tumors, then I might die. So what they said, immediately you need operation tomorrow. It was really, really urgent, the physical you know, condition, situation. So this is the uh, Keishilyam, what they said. Uh, I, I forgot the word. It's what is called? What is called this one? I said, okay. Diver, diverticulitis, something like that. And then Jang Gishilam, do you know how this symptom you know had? Keep in mind, if you have a lot of samgyapsal, keep in mind this one, okay? He wanna go to the samgyapsal place tomorrow and then buy some stuff and alright, your age is maybe younger, it's okay, but we do encourage a lot of you know, yate veggies and you know try exercise. Eat more and more and more greasy, greasy kind of greasy stuff like then I used to really like hamburgers a lot, ramen. Every night, come ramen I did. Almost as a college freshman year, every night ramen. It's kind of like frozen food I had all the times. So um, 
you know, I had a huge pain. I went to hospital by myself, and then small hospital. The doctor took the X-ray film, and then everything was what the white. Or well, he was really shocked that you know what, you need to go to a big hospital tomorrow. I mean, immediately. Well, I said that. Uh, well, next week I need to go to the military. It's an obligation. Uh, it's okay. You know what? You have to have an operation first. So I tried to maybe uh, just you know delay my obligation. You know the military obligation. So you know I lost seven days, ten k actually kilogram. I still have a photo, but I don't want to show you. But it said looks like North Korean kid. I'm sorry, I have to say that. I lost like this. Lost so much weight. I remember. Seven days, no food, like kind of Saul Paul, no food, no drink water. And I remember one of the, the patient sitting right next, uh, lay down right next to me, he started to eat white chuk, sur mongwa. Smells so good. <laughs> well, it smells like a steak, like only one white chuk. Wow. I wish I could have. But like, you know, like, oh, like I remember, like no food, no just only IV, like ninger mambako, okay, so nutrition, like. So I lost ten k, and every night I cry well, because of this reason. God, you told me, you recommend me to go to Bible college, I did. You commend me, those who, I mean, follow your direction, which is what. Make a commitment, worship your name, and put your all the efforts on your study. Maybe I believe in God with your strength and heart. That's what I did. And seriously, like I never ever go to the nightclub or you know the bad things all the time as a college kid. Very good things, worship the Lord all the times. However, somehow why you put me in this suffering, pain? Even the moment that I'm gonna worry about military obligation next week, I'm crying all the time, watching the outside through the windows. And the um, next week, the following week, my my mom and dad went to the uh, the military department and trying to delay, which is to postpone my you know entrance day of the uh, my military obligation. What they said. Mil uh, oh, interesting is I got the letter from the military department two departments first one is Air Force which is the uh, optional one which I took the test second one is same day October 4th actually remember the, even the army which is the uh, the draft which means the obligation no matter what I have to be in the Chuncheon the, the base so I just juggling which is the better and the, you know lay down then they said even I got a the, here a bandage here what they said, no delay. Physically, you have to be there. And then you, the military doctor will let you leave. What? That's the policy, what they said. Okay. Then, you know, uh, my dad and mom, we decided to go to um, Air Force, which is Jin Jinju area. And they did driving about five hours from Seoul to the, you know, the Jinju. And then seven days of training, they, they take, take, take the body exam. Uh, I, I, I still remember, I didn't have a haircut. I thought that I'm going to come back, you know, the day, you know, same day. And, and then the, you know, I remember, uh, I met the, the, the medical, I mean, the, the military doctor. He, he had a body exam, my my you know, body, and then he, he, well, he immediately said, oh, your, your symptoms are pretty bad. You need to go back home. So, oh, I was really happy. <laughs> so, uh, you know, so, but what they said, but you need to come back again after three months. Oh, so, you know, okay. And then we came back to Seoul. And the next day, uh, I went to the military department, you know, the office. With the, uh, the letter from the Air Force, guess what? The guy who checked my letter, what he said, you know what, you're against the, our school, I mean, the, our, the army policy right now. Because... Army is mandatory. You have to be there, not the Air Force. So today, you have to go to Chuncheon. If not, you go to jail. What? 
I mean, my man, that had a really shock, and then, so we immediately left from the, uh, the department of the military, and then go to Chinchan. And then when we land, arrived at the base, guess what? Jehovah Witness, you know Jehovah Jung, Jehovah Witness? They have policy to not go to the military. They try to avoid, somehow, the, not the sword of some certain country or the flag, something like that. They're kind of fake. The person right in front of me, as he, the Jehovah, Jehovah Witness, he escaped actually, the, 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 the base. And then, enter the, the base, so now it's like crazy. But the, at that moment, I just got into the base and then a lot of people with the finger at me and then were really really mad at me. He solemn the run they yell at me, something like that. Wow. So I was really stressful and, and they took me to the uh, the Chuncheon hospital. And then like I was uh, just wearing the bandage shirt, it's really pain, and hard to walk and you know it was really kinda of pain. Even though they didn't have a haircut, I thought maybe same uh, result from the um, Air Force. So maybe come back again. Guess what? The military, uh, the doctor, he read the, all the, the, the doctor's recommendation letter and what he said. You from Bundang? Yes, I am. So, oh, I, I'm, li I'm living in Bundang. Oh, good. It's my whole, same neighborhood, right? And then what he, what he said, uh, well, let me check the, your body. Then he you know, checked my body and then he really, really knows like, you know, my symptom right now. Then he start to write down. So I thought, ah, maybe I'm going to come back three months later. And then I asked this question, what is my result? What did he say? You're not able to join military anymore. It's like you are exempt. I asked this question, what did you say? That you're exempted. You want to go to, you want to come to the military? No. <laughs> and then I called my mom. And then what, what she immediately asked me, what, what was happening? So what was the result? And then, Oh, mom, tomorrow I'm going to go back home. So, uh, military obligation, which is training time, the army, is a three days, you got to stay, and then send it to the other base, maybe Inje. It's like kind of really far away, pretty close to DMZ area. All of my friends go to here. Maybe, maybe our teachers are go come to here, this area. Uh, Inje. Inje kame onje ona. It's like something like that. So anyway, so... Um, you know, after three days, no haircut, and I, I just came back home. And my father, I remember the day I came back, my father, he was waiting for me in the living room, and what he said, you know what, I think this is God's will. So, I realized, I know like I went through a lot of physical like illness and a lot of you know, difficulties, but I had a chance to study more. So I decided, my parents decided, you know, they sent me to the, uh, they, they uh, want me to uh, go to America. And then the, uh, I, you know, I went to the States and started to uh, my undergraduate, you know, program. That's why I went to the States when I was at age 21 or 20 in Korean, uh, American age. So I met a couple of people. This is the photo I graduated my uh, the seminary. Uh, <laughs> At the age of about 28, yeah, 28, my father and my mom and my actually the uh, my uh, friends actually that's my, my best actually um, nuna, um, not the physical nuna but the uh, uh, nuna something like that. Yeah. As, uh, and I want to tell you this one: about 18 years as an international student in the states, God, you know, I went through many many like a lot of serious difficulties. But each difficulty, what I learned that somehow God has sent the person, the people who can change or support me and help me, encourage me to be better and get improved. Well, on the left side person, um, you guys know, may know that as uh, the Pacific University, I used to work here and then the uh, president, uh, John Wallace, I used to work for his office. And uh, when we came, and then I, I you know, helped and you know, assisted him as a translator and also the um, uh, international, uh, the, you know, the ministry. And also on the right side here, the Bixby is the one of the uh, VPs, which means the vice president. And my uh, mentor, doctoral program, Dr. John and Dr. Park. He's a Korean American. Uh, he's a Korean, but um, my mentor. 
um, they helped my education a lot actually and then encouraged me during the IMF which is the economic crisis time help me a lot which means all the time is so I encourage to get better as a mentors you know provide a lot of things what I learned from them be a teacher and school leader in many ways the best lesson from them what they said get engaged engaged with students knowing what they need in their context like Jesus Christ he was willing to spend his own time with many people uneducated rich even the uh, like you know poor people and then another person uh, Dr. Longman he's the, my uh, doctoral program the mentor she just re uh, retired and she gave me this letter as an encouragement when I finished my doctoral program it's such a great great um, you know, memory, inspiration, which inspired my life, my career as a professional researcher. I still remember what she has done, you know, for my education. It's a great time. The last person, spiritual mentor, um, Pastor Joe Gonzalez. Some of you guys know this, uh, watch this one uh, uh, in the Philippines. Uh, he used to be a pastor in the uh, Arizona, um, the Phoenix actually, Indian Reservation. Well, he died when he was 62. When I met him, age of about late 50, he didn't have a teeth, nothing. And then the diabetes, he was strolling. Unfortunately, he lost his legs because of you know getting the, uh, the diabetes like you know more. He's not able to move. I got a lot of shot, but you know, unfortunately, um, he stopped working you know for God, and he died earlier. I was a uh, Joining his uh, seminar, the, the was a funeral service, and many people it came recognized what he did for the God's ministry. Well, what I learned, I like to tell you this one. I was not, I was a forty-five ranking person among sixty-five you know, out of sixty-five students as a freshman middle school student, and then many people judge, point out, finger at me as a loser. Or just you know maybe not a you know smart kid, but there are some people waiting, encouraging, and also praying for my education with unconditional love and their patience, and then also their support, parents, and teachers, and spiritual mentors. It is called go with the flow. From youngest age, which is the middle school, even elementary school, to here, age to 52, I remember all teachers, the people I met, this is not by accident. It must be God's plan. There's, there must be reason why I went through that challenge, difficulties. I want to encourage you guys. Spark a period of a personal growth. Your teachers, including myself, we actually working, you know, this community as a teacher. What do you think? You know, let me tell you, the exchange program is for your teachers is more work. Maybe you don't feel that way, but you know, they have to get the overpay actually. They need to. And then they're working from you know, all the morning, 7 a.m. to midnight. You know, go to the U.S. You may not know that we don't need to drive. We don't need to cook, book the, you know, Airbnb, whatever. And as a chef, a driver, we don't have to. We just, you know, simply, easily hire an you know, agent, you know, have you guys pay more money. However, we are willing to drive. We are willing to spend overnight. We are willing to listen to your voices. What do you think why? It is called dedication. It is called the moment. We're looking for the moment we can inspire you. You could have a spark, a period of moment. You could be changed and you could be growing. And move on to the stage. It is called what? Hope. I know it's kind of embarrassing moment. Hyono, he gave me this piece of paper probably he was under pressure 
the, the teachers, you know, the appreciation day. Let me read this one for you. I'm going to read it well. I know the grammar, grammar is some kind of mistake. <laughs> Dear Dr. Lee, I am always very thankful for your support. I see hope after I came to this school. I couldn't see hope when I was in public school. I am appreciating your support for my favorite every day and I will follow everything you say. Thank you. <laughs> well, this is kind of parents' heart. You know, sometimes when we see you as a immature child, senior students, a few days ago, my, my daughter, uh, Lois, well, she said, I'm really tired. I'm studying, working 80 courses, and I'm burned out. I'm qualified. To, I'm, you know, eligible to, you know, go to Norebang one day or Hongdae with Caleb Chang. It's like, <laughs> are you dating what I said? It's like, and also Grace Cho. So, and then I said, and then I was uh, having dinner, and then really, really angry. It's like, what? And then I asked this question. Did you finish your college essay? And then she stopped talking and became speechless. As a father, I suddenly I expressed my temper. What? Like this. And they kind of start yelling at her. And she became speechless and then tears and went back into the room. Probably this picture of you. Your parents, maybe eating time, maybe morning time, right after Sunday service, after holiness, they start maybe chansori, or maybe give you a lot of pressures. Your teachers may give you a lot of you know, pressures. But please keep in mind this one. I know, we, maybe your parents and I, including myself, we are impatient. But not really. We have seen you. It is called hope. We have seen you, your possibility. We have seen you, your potential. Because you are going to have it is called spark of a period, changing your perspectives, changing your life philosophy, changing your life values. Not money, not fame, not college, not boyfriend girlfriend. That's a typical, the world, what people pursue on. As we Christians, as we the people who follow Jesus, we grow up in the name of Christ with the new hope. What people, what the Bible mentioned, like Paul. God sent, has sent a special person to Paul's life. Let me rephrase another word. God has sent Mr. John, Miss Angela, Mr. John, uh, Joseph, Dr. Sun, Miss Phoebe, Mr. Jean, Mr. Park, and Dr. Lee into your life. Mr. Chris, <laughs> as a special mentor, as a special teacher, and here, and so that in order to do, you may see again. We want to encourage you guys see the world again, differently, differently. How do you do that? How do you do that? This one, what you need that here, scales fell from your eyes. What you have, typical. Things, jealous, envy, like all the time, you're greedy, heart, mind, comp like maybe you're comp like more desire, all the things for yourself as a skills coming, fell, falling from your eyes and then replaced with new content lens, new perspectives, life values, put it on your eyes as a new person, 
and follow Jesus Christ. This is the spark moment which confess. Senior students, keep in mind this one. Look back your life, as I mentioned, age like maybe 25 to here this moment, or maybe age like 13 years to this moment. Go with the flow, but somehow, at a moment, a spark moment, here, experience about this one. Send someone into your life by God. Young people and our teachers, what is the purpose of this exchange program? What do you think? Just fun? And go to the maybe paintball game? Or just you know swimming? Or just you know, good food here? And just meet you, like, you know, please yourself? Or we're trying to support yourself to, to maybe spend more time? No, well, not really. The purpose of this exchange program is this one. Get to know each other. About what? Your what you, you to, what you get experienced, like maybe some more needs, maybe story from about your story about you, like maybe some special needs on help, or maybe prep topics. Maybe you never ever reach out to some new students. You want to approach them with your willingness and get to know who you are, who are they, and then what? Share about your story. Encourage them. As what God has sent you to their life as a friend, as a mentor, as a spiritual friend. I believe this is a genuine community we have to pursue and we have to work on creating this community in the name of Christ. And I believe this is the ultimate goal we're gathering this moment through this exchange program. You know, I'm not trying to brainwash you guys. I want to encourage you guys to remember, remind yourself that, you know, the purpose, which means what? We gathering here to learn from God and learn about, learn from your teachers and learn from right next to your person. When we go back to JCS, your home, and your maybe churches, we need to go back home with this one, new scales, new perspectives, new lives, new life value, then we're going to what? Have a new life in the name of Christ. That is the ultimate goal we pursue on and we through the, this time and we gathering together. I want to encourage you guys. Today, I want to go back to the question. Think about as a sixth grader, 7th grader, 8th grader, middle school students, as a 9th grader, 10th grader, 11th grader, and 12th graders, as a teachers, and husband, and wife, even um, the friends. Who will be your mentors? Who will be your best friends? It change your life and change your perspective. Then you, as a receivers, how become more let's go, supporters, givers? That is the question we have to think about. And also the moment, the spark of personal growth, which means what? We must be desperate to what? Have this moment in the name of Christ and grow up and then you know get, get to know God more with better attitude, better faith. So I want to encourage you guys today, we're going to have a prayer moment. And then, the, uh, as a, you know, what's called uh, your grade uh, together as a sixth grader, seventh grader, uh, ninth grader, I mean, the eight, nine, ten, twelve, twelfth grader, let's get together. And then, the, let's listen to your friend's prayer topic and the story. And then, the, how can I you know, pray for you? And then, any prayer topic, if you listen, then let's pray together in the name of Christ, okay? All right, let's stand up. All right, let's get together.